Screw distillation, how top reflux rate affects flooding on top trays. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Norm Lieberman speaking to you from my home in Louisiana. I'm out in the country enjoying the day. And what I would like to talk to you about is what happens to the vapor load on the top of a crude tower if you do one thing and one thing only and that is you're going to increase the reflux rate. Certainly the tower top temperature is going to go down unless the trays perhaps are flooding. But let's assume normal process operations. You increase the reflux rate, the pump around duties are fixed, the crude rate is fixed, the heater outlet temperature is fixed, and you increase the crude, top, crude tower top reflux rate and the tower top temperature starts to go down and the vapor flow through the upper trays is going to go up. That is reducing the tower top temperature with more reflux increases the flow of vapor up the tower. This may seem counterintuitive, but let me just say one thing. When you increase the tower top reflux rate, the reflux vaporizes. As the reflux vaporizes, the pounds of vapor so generated by converting the sensible heat content of the upflowing vapors to latent heat of vaporization of the reflux increases the pounds of vapor flow going up the tower. And let me say one other thing. As you increase the top reflux rate, the molecular weight of the upflowing vapor, of course, diminishes. The vapor gets lighter. As the molecular weight of the outflowing vapor decreases, the number of moles increases. And I use the term moles interchangeably with the idea of volume. So when you do one thing and one thing only, ladies and gentlemen, raise the tower top reflux rate and the tower top temperature goes down, the volumetric flow of vapor through the upper trays does not decrease, it increases. And if you're running close to the flood point, that move will make the upper trays flood.